job because I've got Parkinson's. You will find tonight is a little bit different to any other fundraising night that you've been to. We don't have someone who used to be on Home and Away as such a host as a, as a start off. Just me. But I was watching people watch that. The first thing I want to say to you is you're allowed to laugh. You're allowed to smile. You're allowed to clap. You're allowed to enjoy yourself. Because tonight is about living positively. And as I said tonight, the lunatics have taken over the asylum. <laughs> That's right, there's one of the lunatics there. <laughs> I, um, they got me to do this because Michael J. Fox, Billy Connolly, Robin Williams and Adolf Hitler was not available or out of our budget. Thank you very much. The German lady's laughing at the Adolf Hitler part. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. You may, be, you may know, but I don't know that everybody else does, and I didn't know until my neurologist told me that Adolf Hitler did have Parkinson's. True? So who, knows, who knew that? In his, yeah, yeah, he put his hand in his pocket, yeah. And at the start of the war, he was like this, and then his movements got smaller, and at the end, he was just like that. Just give him a little Hitler one. Because <laughs> if those people who don't know, your movements get slower when you've got Parkinson's. I was going to ask for a show of hands, to see who has got Parkinson's in the audience, but yeah, it might take about 20 minutes. <laughs> so I thought we'll leave that one. But I, I wanna thank everybody here. This crowd, as uh, Jeff said, it's a huge crowd for the Garvin, and it's wonderful to see. I'm sure all of you have heard it. If you've ever had an illness or a bereavement, someone will come up to you and say, if there's anything I can do, just let me know. And as my wife said to me, she said, Gary, they mean well. And I said, no, it's an empty comment. I'm still waiting for someone to come around and mow the lawn or clean my oven. <laughs> so if anybody's free, they can come around and do that for me. It's great. But that's what I mean. I want to thank you people because you have done something. Just by the mere fact that you are here, before you donate a plethora of dollars to the Bernie Dolls, That's good. You can kick it any time you like. Yep. Don't fall over it. Everyone, this is Glenda. She's one of the people in It's Not Funny. In the 60s in Brisbane, she was a cage dancer. Which may, it sort of tells the tale of my generation. You had cage dancers and we have cage fighters. It's not really fair. But now she's teaching people and we're going to dance classes for Parkinson's in Bankstown, so the world turns. But you've still got all the moves, haven't you? <laughs> Thank you. Um, how's everybody going with the cups and saucers? That's, that's John's idea of a joke. <laughs> but um, it's debatable whether Parkinson's is hereditary, but my uncle used to come around and when he'd leave, me and my brothers would go, oh, Uncle Keith, you want a cup of tea? So now I just look at my nephew whenever he looks at my handshake and say, you watch what you think. Because <laughs> the world will turn. If you can't hear me or any of the guests tonight, it may not be the sound system, it may be because our voices are getting smaller. If you see my hand shaking and you think it's because I'm nervous, you're probably wrong. Although my tremor has been mistaken for other things. I was in a uh, kebab shop late one night in Surrey Hills and the young guy next to me goes, I've had my hand in my pocket like this and the guy next to me goes, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I've got Parkinson's, do you want some? <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. you want a bit? As if I've got, okay. If you, if you can't read my face, my stone face, and you can't tell whether I'm joking or whether I'm serious, just laugh anyway, because it'll make me feel better. 
And that's what tonight is about. It's about positivity and making everybody feel better about their lives. We've got some great positivity activists with us tonight. We've got John... What's your last name, John? See, if I make a mistake, it's all Parkinson's fault. <laughs> if anything goes in my life, I've got Parkinson's. Oh, I remember John's name, John, the other John. We have John McDonald from the Sydney Morning Herald, the art critic. And you're still with the Sydney Morning Herald? I know. Everybody else has gone to the Daily Terror. He is the Sydney Morning Herald. <laughs> and then John Peplow is the man who's put all this together and the website together. And he's one of our guests. We want to put your hands together for the two Johns. We have Bernie McGrath, who's the artist who put all these paintings together. Yeah, the Bernster. And Bernie is also the doll. We have one rule tonight. You break it, you pay for it. We also have... Some, we have some smart people, like we've got a neurologist, Paul Clouston. Yeah. Over there, woo! Did I, get, did I say the name right, Clouston? Because I heard your sons were going to beat the shit out of me if I said it wrong, so. <laughs> Pick on the guy with Parkinson's, that's right. <laughs> Associate Professor Anthony Cooper from the Garvin. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. And we've got um, a couple of people from the website. We've got Clyde and Glenda, and they've got some special stories to tell as well. So it's going to be a good night. I just want to be a little bit self-indulgent beforehand and tell you my story, mainly because even though I've got Parkinson's, I still love the sound of my own voice. <laughs> so when I talk about positivity, I'm not saying it's not confronting to be um, diagnosed with Parkinson's. I, um, you hear stories talking to people who are told things like, oh, you'll have, you're all right for about five years and in 10 years you'll be in a home. So that's like number one. Number two, I heard from my neurologist, passed it on about a guy had been referred back to him. Why are you asking about your libido? You've got Parkinson's. Forget that. And then I was told when I went to a sleep trial, the doctor was trying to make light of it, I suppose. She said, you're very young to have Parkinson's, which is kind of nice, because at 44, if anyone tells you you're young, you know, I'll put my hand up. But then she said, someone just stole 30 years of your life. How do you feel? I said, well. Anyways, but I had a great teacher in positivity because my, my wife has taught me a lot. My wife and I had our lives changed by what I call the A4 bit of paper. The first time around... We'd just been married. Jane, are you here? She's very short. There she is. <laughs> just, just so everybody knows how beautiful she is and that she's alive. And um, we're in a we had to go and see a neurologist because we'd just been married and there was a change in Jane. And Jane thought she had a brain tumour and I thought she was a bitch. So we went to see a neurologist and the neurologist started to draw the picture of the brain and then a spine and said, you've got a sclerosis here and you've got a sclerosis there. And I'm thinking, what do you think, we're five? And she's going to say, you've got multiple sclerosis. You have never seen two happier people leave a neurologist's office in your life. Well, Jane's like this. <laughs> it's not a tumour, it's a headache. James saying, I don't have a tumour. And I was like, at least now I know why she's a bitch. Which made life a lot easier. Then four years ago, we found ourselves in another neurologist's office. And this time, the white piece of paper was put down for me. And as she put it down, Jane and I just looked at each other and laughed. And the neurologist was like, what's going on? I said, we've done this before. That's cool. We had one flat tyre, now we've got two. She said, go home, the neurologist, not Jane. She said, go home and I want you to come back with questions tomorrow and have a glass of wine and I'll see you tomorrow. So being the good patient I am, I went home and had a bottle of wine. <laughs> Got up the next morning and I always think it's good to at least have a release when you have a, a grief moment. And um, I got in the shower and I like to make myself cry in these moments and cry in the shower. So then 
Jane doesn't know I'm crying and I don't even know I'm crying. And um, it might may, may not be the right song now, but the song that I used to trigger myself was Two Little Boys by Ralph Harris. <laughs> Come on. Do you think I would leave you lying while there's room on my horse for two? <laughs> Climb aboard, Jane will soon be flying. No, I'll cry. You'll cry. Um, so the f question number one when I went in was, can I get a, a disabled parking sticker? <laughs> and she said, no, you, you're not bad enough. I was like, okay, next one, think about it. Can I have a, can I have a letter from, from you guys saying my dog is a companion animal so I can take him into pubs? And she goes, no, you're not blind. And I said, you should see me in the pub. <laughs> so then I asked the last question, which probably wasn't my good one. I asked, what are the odds? Because at this stage, I'd, I wasn't getting anything out of it. I asked, what's the um, chances of a wife having M MS and a husband having Parkinson's and having not, not having met in a neurologist's office? And she said, I don't know what the odds are, but my associate has got a husband and wife who both have motor neuron disease. I learned two things very quickly. One, there's always someone worse off than you. And two, nobody likes a smart ass. <laughs> but what, what has also happened is, I was surrounded by friends that night and one of my friends is here, Phil, where's Phil Vagona? Phil was the man, when we, State of Origin was on that night, we went back, I, I didn't want to cancel. Phil was one of the first people who actually noticed. He said, you're looking a bit stiff. I said, yeah, I've got Parkinson's. And, he's, and Phil works in a doctor's surgery. And his suggestion was, if you put your carer's application in at the same time as you put your, Jane puts her invalid pension <laughs> in, and then vice versa, we can double dip. <laughs> so thank you for your support on that, Phil. We had one of, our, one of our clients said to Jane, he's got Parkinson's, you've got MS, together you've got PMS. <laughs> so it was nice to have the support of friends. You can come around and mow my lawn, Phil, if, if you like. Um, but what's also happened with, and this is what It's Not Funny is about, it's about places where people can go when they've been diagnosed to see that there's other people living their lives. And one of the things that happens that John will talk about is the reinvention of people. And that's what's happened with Bernie and a few other people you'll meet tonight. I wasn't so sure about this reinvention business. I read um, Michael J. Fox's book. How many people read that? It's sort of um, one of those things you do when you've got Parkinson's. I didn't want to read it because I didn't want to know what was going to happen. But I read it. And to save you the read, the basic premise of this is Michael J. Fox thought he was a dick. He got Parkinson's and then he wasn't a dick. I was like, I wasn't a dick. Why do I have to get Parkinson's for? <laughs> but then I thought about it, and I was probably a little bit of a dick. So. <laughs> but what happened was I stayed off medication for 12 months in order to go into Michael J. Fox's Parkinson's pro um, progression markers initiative. So in that time, my left side got to about 90. And, um, but that wasn't what bothered me. What troubled me was the fact that my brain started to slow down. So if people were having a conversation, by the time I thought of my smart ass remark, they'd moved on to two or three other things. When I went on to medication, I got that back. And that was the thing that has driven me since. It's very easy to, to say, if you want to go into public speaking, then Parkinson's probably not the right thing to have. You've got the shakes, your voice goes, and you look blank but it's something that I've done a lot more of since because I learned a big lesson in self-esteem through Parkinson's and it's not about what, I used to think self-esteem was about what everybody else thought of me, but I've learned that it's about what I think of myself and it's about what I can do for everybody else's self-esteem, everybody around me. And that's what this website's about. If I can make you guys have a laugh 
for 10 seconds. I don't expect to change anybody's life, but if I can just make you feel happy for a minute, that'll make my day a better place. So that, to me, is what Parkinson's is about.